Давай, давай, блядь, хуярим нахуй. Кидай, блядь, кидай, кидай, блядь, кидай, блядь, кидай, блядь, Cesenia is a town more or less equidistant between Toledo and Madrid. In October 1936, the rebel nationalist army of General Francisco Franco was moving towards the Spanish capital on its long march from the south. The Spanish government had taken delivery of T-26 light tanks from the Soviet Union. Fifteen of them armed with a 45mm cannon were deployed against the rebels on the 29th of October 1936 at Sesenia. The tanks were massed together and advanced with each one supporting the other. Sesenia was liberated and the tanks moved on to Esquivias, although they were unable to capture the town. The legend is that General Franco himself had the idea of filling jam jars or bottles with gasoline, covering it with a thick material tied on with string, setting a light to the material and throwing it at the tank. On that day, three T-26s were completely destroyed and three badly damaged by both the burning jam jar and the nationalist artillery. That, it would appear, was where the cocktail was born, although it did not yet have its name. Of course, fire as a weapon has been used since antiquity, and usually with a similar principle of a flammable material which is burning, being hurled at the enemy. The first flamethrowers, if that is the correct word for something like this, appear to have been developed independently in Byzantium in the 7th century and China in the 9th century. In the modern sense, the first patent for a true flamethrower was submitted in Germany in 1901. They first appeared on the battlefield on the 26th of February 1915, when they were used briefly against the French outside Verdun. On the 30th of July 1915, it was first used against British trenches at Hooge, where the lines were only 4.5 metres apart. It would seem that most casualties were caused by soldiers trying to escape the flames and then shot. After two days of fighting, the British had suffered 782 casualties, although of course not all of them from flamethrowers. So that's the industrial flamethrower, but what about the homemade Molotov cocktail? It was Soviet tanks that were on the receiving end of the next two conflicts that used this new cocktail. During the Battle of Kalkin Gol between Japan and the Soviet Union, the Japanese found themselves lacking in anti-tank equipment. Therefore, the infantry attacked Soviet tanks with gasoline-filled bottles. The idea, however, does not seem to have caught on in any scale in the Japanese army. I am unaware of it being used anywhere else during the Second World War. But of course, if you know better, do put it down in the comment section. On the 30th of November 1939, the Soviet Union attacked Finland. The excuses then used by the Kremlin were remarkably similar to those used to attack Ukraine 82 years later. One might have thought that in the intervening time they would have come up with some new excuses, but hey, why make up new excuses when the old ones still appear to work? Expecting an easy victory, the Soviet troops charged in only to be met by determined resistance and the destruction of their mechanized forces through the use of the cocktail, which now had become a more sophisticated weapon with the addition of alcohol, kerosene, tar, potassium chloride and chemicals which acted as a detonator when the outer bottle broke, thus eliminating the need to pre-ignite the bottle. Filling the bottle two-thirds full was found to make the weapon more effective, as it was more likely to break upon impact. Possibly thinking of their probable requirement a bit closer to home, a British War Office report of June 1940 noted that 
The Finns' policy was to allow the Russian tanks to penetrate their defences, even inducing them to do so by canalising them through gaps and concentrating their small arms fire on the infantry following them. The tanks that penetrated were taken on by gunfire in the open and by small parties of men armed with explosive charges and petrol bombs in the forests and villages. The essence of the policy was the separation of the armoured fighting vehicles from the infantry, as once on their own the tank has many blind spots and brought to a stop can be disposed of at leisure. In that description, from 1940, we can see the importance of combined arms, that of using the infantry to back up the tanks and indeed how ineffective tanks can become when operating in heavily forested regions. In Finland, Molotov cocktails were mass-produced by the Alcor Corporation at its Rayamaki distillery and came equipped with two specially designed matches to light them. The matches did away with the requirement of having to set a light to a rag before throwing. The company managed to produce 450,000 units before the Winter War came to an end. Quite an industrial achievement, I would say, given the limited time in which this was done and the limited time it had for preparation. But where does the name come from? Why Molotov? Molotov was the foreign minister of the Soviet Union, the man who had signed the pact with his corresponding minister in Nazi Germany, thus giving his name to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. The Soviet Union was using cluster bombs against the Finns, the first use of such bombs, I might add, that I am aware of. Molotov denied that Finland was being bombed, but did state that the Red Army was dropping bread on Finland for the starving Finnish workers. Thus, the bomb casing that held the cluster bombs became known as the Molotov Bread Basket. The cocktail was so named because it was a drink to go with the food. From this time on, the Molotov cocktail has become a feature of unrest, either in riots or as an anti-armour weapon. However, whereas it was very effective against armour during World War II, its use is now somewhat limited. Early tanks had slits in them for ventilation or vision, and a well-placed Molotov cocktail could easily seep into the engine, and once mixed with the vehicle fuel or ammunition, could do a great deal of damage. These days, however, the situation is very different. Whereas we have seen civilians making Molotov cocktails in Ukraine in large numbers, their use against a modern tank is somewhat limited, although they would be just as effective against soft-skinned vehicles as they always were. Today's tanks have nuclear, biological and chemical defences and can ford through rivers or even go underwater if equipped with a snorkel. So burning fuel on the outside is not going to do much damage. However, note I did say not much damage. Burning fuel could still do some damage, for example to the external sensors, and being inside when there's a fire outside could cause the crew to panic and abandon the vehicle. Therefore, do expect them to continue to be used as a cheap alternative to an anti-tank missile, but don't expect them to have the success that they had in Finland when the Kremlin invaded that country between 1939 and 1940. Thanks very much for listening. The comment section is available for any uh, comments you may wish to make. And uh, as for me, if you subscribe, uh, I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours at my time, which is in Central Europe. That's um, as a minimum. However, I sometimes upload uh, during other times as well. Very often these days I upload twice, three times, four times, five times a week. And uh, if you subscribe, you will be informed when there's something new. My specialization is in uh, modern European history in, and in particular the Second World War and within that the Holocaust, although I do uh, publish things relating to other subjects as well, which you may or may not find interesting. I hope you do find them interesting and if you do, 
that's a good reason to subscribe. So all the best from me.